It's six o'clock and uh, all is well. What are you doing? What is happening? Oh, yeah, okay. I've got echo here. Is that better? No. Is it like cool? So I get, oh, okay. We're going to, oh, this is too. Is that better? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. I'm still a bit echoey, to be quite honest with you. Um, welcome to this meeting of the Planning Committee. My name is Councillor David Beeman, and I'm the Chairman of this committee. Members and officers, please keep your... Please raise your hand to indicate that you wish to speak. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. And please, can I also ask that any questions are kept brief and to the point? Uh, contribution will be time tonight, and you'll be back in four minutes. We have seven members of the public and two ward councillors speaking tonight. And I would like to remind ward councillors to sit separately from the committee when applications in the ward are being considered and voted on by the committee. Right, let's go in with the agenda. One, apologies for absence of substitutions. Layla. Yep, um, I've received apologies from uh, Councillor Andrew Lawton and Councillor Janet Crow. And uh, Andrew Lawton will be substituted by Councillor Michaela Wicks. And Councillor John Ward is substituting Councillor McLean. Thank you very much. Uh, minutes of the last meeting. Uh, I think uh, before we go on to the minutes, there is a slight correction on the minutes of the last meeting in the sense that it's shown that Councillor McLean was present and she wasn't. Could they be altered, please? Mm -hmm. Other than that, I yeah. um, ask you to confirm the minutes of the meeting on the phone. Everybody agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Declarations of interest. Uh, are there any declarations of interest, Leila, or any other committee members wish to ask any declarations? Yeah. Oh, yes, Councillor Morrison. Uh, sorry, Wildlife Trust. You remember, are you, sir? I am indeed, yes. Uh, questions from members of the public? No, none received. Questions from members? None received, thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes, Phoebe, yeah. That's okay, I just declaration of interest first application is in my ward. So just wanna... Yes, yes, I'm, I'm into that, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it's the government led guidance or legislation since the last meeting, Kimberly or Claire? No, Chair. Right, we'll move on to the main item on tonight's agenda. Uh, the first big application to which public speaking, and this one is WA 2023-00357, the land to the rear of Eden House, Portsmouth Road, Wilford Godling, GU85DS, an application for the construction of two two-storey, three-bedroom dwellings with associated parking and new access onto Elmside at the land rear of Eden House, Portsmouth Road, Milford, Godling, GU85DS. Uh, there's an appeal decision attached to the report for the support. Right, uh, Dylan to present. Dylan. Thank you very much. Uh, so this application construction of a uh, two two story houses with associated parking and access. Uh, the application site is located within the rural settlement of Milford. Uh, it is to the rear of Eden House here and Hunter's Pride, uh, which front Portsmouth Road. Uh, the site here would front Elmside. Uh, so the Area is predominantly residential in character with some commercial uses uh, around the area. So you have, you have a pharmacy here, post office, uh, preschool over here. Uh, it's a mixed character of two storey detached and semi detached dwellings uh, fronting Portsmouth Road and a mix of bungalows uh, and some two storey properties uh, which front onto Elmside. Uh, so this is the 
block plan here. Uh, so you have demolition of the uh, existing outbuilding, uh, two detached two-storey properties uh, sitting centrally, centrally within the site, um, offset from the side, side boundaries by approximately 1.5 metres here at this point, uh, 2.5 metres from the northern boundary with Eden House and Hunter's Pride. Uh, each garden would be slightly over uh, 11 metres in depth. Uh, the closest residential property is number two Elmside, uh, just to the south here, at approximately 7.5 metres from the side elevation of the proposed unit. Uh, then you have Eden House at 18.5 metres uh, from the rear of the property to the side. Uh, the other neighbouring properties are at greater distances. Uh, so the access plan here uh, shows adequate vis visibility displays uh, from the access, from the proposed access onto Elmside. Uh, you can see the properties are set back from the highway to provide uh, adequate parking to the front for both dwellings. And this also includes uh, two, uh, a garage for each property uh, integral to the property. Uh, so we move on to the site photos here. It's the front of the site. You can see the outbuilding in the photo to be demolished. And uh, here, where the proposed access would be constructed. Uh, so this is looking towards uh, the south down Elm side. So we have a maps in the bottom corner with arrows, which indicate where the photo was taken from. Uh, so looking south down Elm side, uh, you can see the outbuilding here to be demolished and you can see the corner of uh, Eden House, the rear garden that the proposal is sited in. Uh, so we're looking north down Elmside, uh, again the application site just here where the building will be demolished. Uh, you've got number one Elmside here, Portsmouth Road uh, in the distance. Uh, so these are some photos from the street scene of Elmside. So you can see that it's a mix of bungalow properties uh, some two-storey properties, and this is one and two Elmside, uh, which are to the south of the site here. Uh, so this is the junction under Portsmouth Road, and you can see the, the character of the properties, two storeys, uh, detached, semi-detached dwellings, uh, looking out to the north with the application site behind us, and then the image from uh, the junction of Portsmouth Road, looking to towards the sites, so you can see Eden House here, and the outbuilding just over here, where the two two-story properties would be located, and you've got one Victor one and two Victoria cottages here. So there is a, a mix of properties, and this is the reverse image. So the rear of Victoria cottages, rear of Eden House. Uh, so moving on to the proposed elevations. Uh, so what's proposed is similar in character and appearance to the nearby dwellings on Portsmouth Road, uh, <clears throat> which the two dwellings would be viewed in the context of. You could see in the previous slides that uh, viewing north and south, the properties would be viewed in the context of Victoria Cottages uh, when entering the junction and heading south or coming around Elmside and heading north where you see the rear of the properties. Uh, side elevations. Uh, move on to the proposed floor plans. So each dwelling would exceed uh, national space standard. Uh, each room would have adequate outlook and uh, the dwellings would mirror one another. So it's handed floor plans. Uh, so there has been a previous application, a 2008 uh, application that was dismissed at appeal, um, that, which is this site plan here. Um, it was for a pair of semi-detached four-bedroom houses. Uh, in this application, the inspector considered the proposal, the proposal appeared in Congress in setting with the bungalows in Elmside and Victoria Cottages on Portsmouth Road, and that the layout would be more visually that would be more visually cramped than the adjacent houses, uh, with an, a vertical emphasis uh, to achieve the required internal floor areas. Uh, it was also considered by the inspector that the garages here. Uh, which are separate from plot one, uh, indicated an overdevelopment and poor design scheme. Uh, so what we've got here is the application site is slightly larger uh, than the previously dismissed scheme. Uh, the dwellings have been separated to form two detached three-story bedrooms that are design-wise more in keeping with 
the dwellings on Portsmouth Road. Um, they're slightly wider to have a more horizontal rhythm, uh, again, in keeping with the Victorian cottages uh, on Portsmouth Road, and parkings provided to each, each to the front of each dwelling with an element of soft landscaping uh, retained or introduced uh, to be more in keeping with the area. So uh, these are the elevations of the dismissed scheme. So you can see a pair of, sem of semi-detached, uh, quite tall and narrow in appearance in the way it's been designed. Uh, so these are the determining issues uh, for the reasons I've set out in the report. And as part of this presentation, the application is recommended for approval uh, with conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dylan. Right. Um, now, this one, we have one of the members of the committee, Councillor Sullivan, who is uh, <laughs> your ward, isn't it? So therefore, you'll not be entitled to speak um, during the debate, but you will have the right for four minutes before and four minutes afterwards. But I must ask you if, if you could please just make musical cheers and just move away from the committee for this part of the session, please. Thank you very much. Right, we have three public speakers then. The first one being a Kevin Scott, who would you speak in support of the scheme? Kevin? You have four minutes, Kevin, when it's from the start. Uh, you're right at the end, I'm afraid. Oh, near the end. The... Right. right, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, members. As you've just heard, I'm Kevin Scott. I'm from Solve Planning and the agent for the application. Uh, very conscious that you've got a detailed report in front of you which sets out the background to the application and the analysis which lies behind the positive recommendation. Uh, and we've also just heard the, the presentation. So I don't want to take up your time by repeating that. But I would just like to highlight a, a couple of points, if I may. From the outset, by undertaking pre-application discussions, our intention was to discuss the scheme with officers to ensure we were properly addressing the site's context and the relevant planning considerations, particularly in light of um, the points you heard in the presentation about the earlier scheme. Um, a bit of a side point, but I would just like to say how helpful it was to be able to meet the case officer in person, which is a service which fewer and fewer councils now offer post lockdown. And that, we found that incredibly helpful. And the input at that stage was, was very valuable and allowed us to make further improvements and refine the scheme prior to submission. I understand the scheme was called into a loud discussion on whether this is an appropriate level of development. And if I could just say a couple of things about that. I hope you can see from the presentation that the proposal for two three bed detached dwellings is, is a simple and calm form of development. And as the report notes, it picks up on the design cues of the housing around it. And in addition to this visual approach, it's always been our intention to design from the outset to comply with all national and local standards. And the scheme's not pushing against any of these or, or showing the symptoms of overdevelopment that I'm sure members may be familiar with on, on, on other schemes they've looked at where, where overdevelopment has been a concern. I fully understand that objections, it, it, it's not a numbers game, but I think the relatively low level of comments and the fact that the parish council have raised no objection, perhaps underline that this is a well-considered scheme that has enabled officers to be comfortable in recommending approval. And I do hope the members will be able to support this recommendation this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. We have two ward counters that will be speaking on this. The first one is Maxine Gale. Maxine, uh, you've got four minutes now. And if you so wish, four minutes afterwards at the end of the debate. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I ask for the application to be heard before committee as the previous ward councillor for Milford, Christine Baker, had spent time speaking with nearby residents and requested a call in. And that was back in February. Um, the objections recorded by residents are only one objection. The others say neither. The ones which say neither concern me as they all have objections as far as I can see. But these may not be objections which could be valid in planning terms or maybe they tick the wrong box. They do cover the following points, along with issues of congested road and parking on the roadside by residents who are already there and the local pharmacy visitors. The side windows in elevations overlooking gardens, loss of privacy due to loss of very large hedge, which would also increase noise. 
the overlooking gardens from the first floor elevations, one to four Victoria cottage gardens all overlooked by the first floor elevation. I note that some windows because of this would be opaque and opening only above a certain height, but is that really a good prospect for the people who may end up living there? Lack of parking if the garages are converted to habitable accommodation, that's something that happens quite often, they're turned into kitchens. Um, this would leave even less off-road parking space per property. And I wonder if the garages actually could accommodate our sort of vehicles we drive these days. Elmside is predominantly single storey or chalet bungalows, not two storey as in the accompanying paperwork. And there are four vehicle access points adjacent to the development. One Eden House has a very has a very old granted application for an entrance from Elmside onto their property, which I note has a garage facing the road, but no tarmac drive over. So I suppose they just go over the grass verge at the moment. An appeal was dismissed in 2008 for a pair of semi-detached and the inspector concluded that the development would cause harm to the character and appearance of the area. I don't see this application as being any different. Semi-detached or detached, it's still built form and it comes with additional vehicles. Personally, I would be happier to see a one low rise property on the site, which would give better parking facilities, less overlooking issues and more room on site for construction, which also bothers me. Um, building those two houses in that small plot off of that very narrow road could cause congestion during the build. Um, we have seen recently in Milford on the 283 parking on the pedestrian crossings, um, on roundabouts, on grass verges, where a development for just one dwelling. And I hate to think how they're going to fit two houses with all that squeezed in with construction traffic. Um, finally, the old Portsmouth Road gets very busy and congested due to the traffic lights and the, it can back up towards Elmside. And I fear that if there's lots of parking on Elmside, as well as the cars trying to get in and out, it's going to cause even more congestion. So that's why I wanted to bring this forward, Chairman. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you very much. Right, Councillor Sullivan, you wish to speak? You got four minutes of your... Oh, no, 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 fine. Um, well, you'll have an opportunity at the end if you wish to speak after then. Right. Um, Councillors, who wish to speak on this item? Anybody? Councillor Rabini. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have a lot of respect for the view of Councillor Gale. Um, she's known the area for a long time. Um, I certainly know the area. But when I look at the papers, if you look on page 15, for example, William Milford Parish Council, no objection. Surrey Highways, no objection. That parking on the road, presumably, is covered by that. In fact, we have no objection from the statutory partners at all. It is, as you say on here, five letters. Unfortunately, we all know that although it's looking at the letters of objection, they don't actually count in numbers in planning terms. It, it's a feeling. So yes, the nearby neighbors have written in. Um, I personally think it's quite a, a neat way of dealing with that bit of land. And I would have thought that the houses would fit in there. There seems to be plenty of room between them and the neighbors. So my own personal view is that I would actually agree with this application and two three bedroom houses in that plot I think would fit um, parking is an issue um, but we can't foreguess that they're going to take the garage and put it into something else because in planning terms of course they are submitting a plan for a garage so we have to take it that that is going to be a garage I do agree that most modern cars probably won't fit in it but we'd have to wait and see um, but on the whole I would agree with it thank you Councillor Corbyn. Um, I agree largely with, with Councillor Rabini. Um, it's like everything else. It's not exactly what I would have put on this site, but given that we have to look at what's there, I think it is uh, acceptable. Can I just clarify, is the obscured glazing not just to bathrooms and en suites? It isn't to a, a habitable room, is it? Oh, that's all right, because that to me uh, is an absolute no-no. I think there's nothing worse than having su such bad design that you have to have obscure glazing in habitable rooms. But if it's just your bathroom and you're on suite, then obviously that's totally different. Um, so, uh, you know, I think with the changes, um, having, you know, I did read the inspector's report carefully. Things have changed in many ways since then, but it, that, it was really bulky, wasn't it, that 
previous one, you could just see how clunky it looked on the site. And, you know, I'd like a little more separation between these two, but as I say, you can't always get exactly what you want. And on balance, I think this is acceptable. Thank you. Any other council wish to speak? No. No. Can't anybody else? Right. Well, we come back to the, <laughs> the, the ward councillors. Councillor Gale, do you wish you have any more comments? Only to say, yes, I, I do appreciate what everyone's saying, Chairman. Um, we have to look at these things on planning grounds, but I do think it's necessary to point out local opinion to these things and maybe if people don't know the area. Thank you. And Councillor Sullivan, you wish to add anything? Right. We move to the recommendation then. That subject to conditions, permission be granted. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against? Abstain. No. Result, please. That's 12-4-0 against, so the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Well, that is granted. Thank you very much. And Phoebe, you can return to your seat now. <laughs> right, move on to the next application, which is WA 2023-00190. Netherwood Court, Elfelma Grove, Godalming, GU 73AF. An application for the direction of an additional floor to create two flats together with alterations to the existing building at Netherwood Court, Filma Grove, Godalming, GU7, 3AF. And it's Tracy Farling to present this book. Tracy. Thank you, Chair. There are a couple of verbal updates to give on this application. Firstly, three additional representations of objection to the scheme have been received. Um, they're on the same grounds as those stated within the officer report of overdevelopment. Um, sorry, impacts upon neighbours and increased traffic along Filmer Grove and on the additional ground of overdevelopment. Uh, one representation mentions the impacts upon 10 Bockton. Whilst the impact on number 10 has not been specifically addressed in the officer report, the impact on number six has been. Six is the flat below number 10, has the same layout and window configuration. As such, the same conclusion can be reached um, that there would be no material loss of light to number 10. And secondly, condition six is to be amended um, to state that prior to the first occupation of the development, the 1.8 metre privacy screening shall be provided to the eastern and western sides of the balcony and the central partition screen between the units. The screening shall remain in perpetuity. That's just to provide some certainty that the appropriate screening shall be provided. On to the application. Netherwood Court is located at the, end, the western end of Filmer Grove, a private road branching off of Nightingale Road in Godalming. The site accommodates a three-storey flatted building with amenity space to the south. Parking is provided in the form of garages to the north and the west of the building. The building provides 12 dwellings at present over three floors. The site slopes down at the rear of the building and the elevations show how the rear projection sits lower than the rest of the building. Balconies are present on the southern elevations at all levels. Floor plan, um, there's four floors on each, um, four flats on each floor at present and the building has a flat roof. The proposed block plan um, simply just shows the addition of one parking space, P23, which is located um, near, adjacent to garages on the western side of the building. The, proposed, the proposal would see the addition of two flats at a third floor level and a pitched roof. The flats and balconies are set back from the southernmost elevation. Each flat exceeds the national space standards and has a balcony. As previously stated, the land falls away to the south. 
The boundary is 16 metres from the rear elevation, beyond which are residential properties of Chalk Road. There's some tree screening along the rear boundary, but a section of hedge has recently been removed, leaving a typical close board fence. The separation distances between the buildings is approximately 24 metres, exceeding the 21 metres set out in the residential extensions SPD. It's noted that land that the land falls away further beyond the rear boundary. This is the rear boundary. And a view looking up towards the existing building from the rear boundary. These are just photographs of the northern part of the site and the northern elevations. The officer report noted a prior approval scheme that was refused. For members reference, this is the scheme that was refused. Um, you could see the orange dotted line on that plan which denotes the application in front of us tonight. The scheme was refused in 2021. Residential amenity was considered to be harmed by this proposal, which featured larger windows and was much taller than the proposed scheme. These images have been provided by the applicant to demonstrate how the proposed scheme would be seen in context. So these are views from across the Lammas lands, they're obviously mocked up. It's considered that the main matters for consideration are the visual impact and the impact upon residential amenity. Uh, subject to conditions, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you very much, Tracy. Right, we're public speakers on this item, the first one being a Mrs. Hallam, I believe. Where's Mrs. Hallam? And when you get down, you have four minutes when you start speaking, Mrs. Hallam. Leila, do you want me to say that I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. G as well? Yes, uh, I just want you to know that um, Mr. G, who was going to also share this time with me, um, is not well, and he submitted to me what he was going to say, so I'm going to deliver that as well. Of course, we recover. Right, Mr. right your four minutes starts when you start speaking, Ms. Arm. The overlooking and lacking of privacy to properties in Chalk Road. The addition of a fourth storey, increasing its height by a further 2.6 metres for two penthouse apartments with large rear balconies will result in an unacceptable degree of overlooking into the gardens, bedrooms and bathrooms of Chalk Road properties, negatively impacting their privacy. Is it acceptable to knowingly facilitate increased overlooking a prior planning report says not. The planning document states that the development will be carried out in accordance with the biodiversity net gain principles through the retention of lawn and mown areas, hedges, trees and other vegetation. A natural tree line on the border between Netherwood Court and Chalk Road has been completely removed in the past few weeks by Netherwood Court unacceptably exposing property to overlooking and no longer offering a degree of privacy as mentioned in the planning document. This upward extension fails to meet the required policy on several fronts. The type of housing that is required in the area and the provision of adequate parking spaces. Godalming Town Council considers it to be an overdevelopment of the site and has objected on the grounds of bulk and mass. The proposed development to Netherwood Court will significantly increase its prominence on the hillside. It will be higher than any other building, making it visually dominant from many public vantage points across the south of Godalming. This overdevelopment for the addition of two dwellings, causing irreversible visual harm to a unique feature of Godalming is wholly inappropriate especially as there are 128 flats coming to market down the hill at the mill development on Borough Road. 
It is hoped that the committee will consider in all seriousness these genuine objections. And now the um, letter from Mr G. The potential building of new dwellings, uh, two new dwellings would create additional congestion and parking issues on this already congested private road. There is inadequate space for the parking of an additional four vehicles to serve the Netherwood Court development. And indeed, after planning amendments, only one has been squeezed into a small space comprising natural landscape, including an embankment. Residents of Netherwood already fill the road outside Brockton due to the lack of parking spaces. Alongside this is the unsuitability of the road to support the heavy industrial vehicles bringing building supplies to and from the site. This will further compromise the space for residential parking throughout the day and be a disturbing presence for all residents at Brockton, many of whom work at home. In addition, there is a real concern regarding the damaging risk of subsidence caused by the works. Currently, Netherwood, Brockton and Grays Lee sit adjacent at equal heights. Increasing the height of Netherwood would overshadow Brockton and be a complete imposition on privacy to residents. The open plan balconies are enjoyed throughout the day and evening and the development would take away natural light and the enjoyment of sunset hours. The two new potential open plan balconies at Netherwood would leave Brockton's existing balconies without any privacy being completely overlooked. Should this application be accepted, it would set a damaging precedence for future developments, so I implore you to reconsider. It is also concerning that residents of Brockton have already been informed that planning permission had been granted. Of the residents of Filmer Grove who have been spoken to, all have objected to this development, yet many have not been listed despite following the procedures set out, including Mr G himself, who only managed to have his objection displayed and uh, a week ago, four months oh, yeah. after being submitted. Well, thank you very much. I'm very time's up, I'm afraid. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, Ward Councillor, Councillor Steve Williams, do you wish to speak on this item? And you have four minutes after, if you so desire. Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this uh, planning application from the Netherwood Court Management Company, which manages the block of flats, which would be extended upwards as a result of this application. Now, as the ward member, um, I asked for this application to be called into this committee um, following significant concerns from immediate neighbours, both in Filmer Grove itself, which is a quiet uh, cul-de-sac, and those living in Chalk Road, which, um, uh, as, uh, as colleagues will be able to see, runs parallel to Filmer Grove at the bottom of the Godalming hillside adjoining the um, Lammers Lands. Now, members of this committee will need to weigh up those concerns of the neighbours, um, uh, the majority of which, in my judgment, would comprise significant planning grounds against the uh, points that have been uh, made earlier by the planning officer. Um, this development does provide additional residential development uh, and the visual impact from Filmer Grove would be relatively slight, although the addition of one additional parking space for two flats, as the officer has just pointed out, could certainly increase the congestion of this quiet uh, cul-de-sac. Um, this development should it occur, however, will have the greatest impact, um, as we have just heard, on the residential amenity of residents of Chalk Road, whose properties are very close to the proposed uh, development. The application uh, adds an additional story, and I quote uh, from the officer's report, the building would increase in height by approximately 2.5 metres, raising the total height to approximately 13.4 metres. Um, and without a site visit, the visual impact on the residents of Chalk Road is actually quite difficult to judge from the photographs we've seen. Now, councillors will have noted from the residents' uh, representation just uh, heard that the developer 
has already removed a line of trees, a line of re trees which did offer a natural privacy screen to the residents of 14 Chalk Road. And this in itself cannot be a planning consideration, but it does demonstrate the extent to which there is already an element of overlooking of properties on 12, 14, 16 and 18 Chalk Road, a problem which would be significantly exacerbated should planning permission be granted here. Now, Godalming Town Council debated this application. It objected on the grounds that the application would be an overdevelopment of the site. Um, and are objected on grounds of bulk and mass. And I would like to express my hope that this committee vindicates that judgment. And I'd remind councillors of Godalming Neighbourhood Plan Policy God 5, which refers to character and design. All development shall not significantly adversely impact on the amenity of neighbours and be sympathetic to the scale, mass, height and form of neighbouring properties. Development proposals must demonstrate how they contribute positively to the features of the respective character areas as described in the Godalming and Farncom right. character right. area assessment. Williams, so I hope members moment. of the committee will uh, take heed of that. Well, Thank you. I have to apologize. I, I, I'm not going to myself. I forgot to give Andre the. Andre, you uh, wish to speak on this item, don't you? Yeah. Sorry. And you've got four minutes, Andre. Would you wish to speak in support of the item? Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. In addition to the points raised in the planning statement document with this planning application, I want to speak to you on behalf of the leaseholders of Netherwood Court Management Company, who own the freehold, and of which I am chairman of directors. Netherwood Court was built in the late 60s. During the 2000s, the roof was replaced, and we were advised that it would last for 20 to 25 years. However, in 2015, we were having issues with ingress of water into the top flats. We decided to have a full survey of the roof, and this raised many issues, including the rotting of the materials underneath the felt and the coping stones. The top layers of bricks had been affected by rainwater running down the walls, and there, as there was no overlapping to stop this. To replace the roof and address these issues was going to be costly, and the surveyor ended his report by saying, why don't you put two points penthouses on the roof which could address these issues? We had not anticipated this, but following discussions with leaseholders, we decided that this should be something that we look into further to see if it was viable. At no time was our intention to make money for ourselves, but to use this as an opportunity to upgrade an entire building and commit and communal zones. Hence, our planning application was submitted and permission was granted in July 2019. We were advised by the planning department that they would not favour a contemporary flat roof, but prefer a pitched roof, which is what we went with and was approved. This was also considered to be in keeping and would better blend into the tree line as viewed from the Lammas land. In 2021, we found a developer who wanted to build this project, but due to difficulties related to COVID and the increased cost of building materials, the developer pulled out in 2022, leaving us in limbo. We have been lucky to find another developer who is keen to take this project over on the same terms, and this new planning application replicates the approved one in 2020. We have read the objection submitted and would like to draw the committee's attention to the fact that the current top floor of our building already overlooks the properties in, in Chalk Road. This will not change. The additional story will only house two families who will no doubt be looking towards the fantastic views at the south. We recently had to remove the hedge at the bottom of the garden because it was dying and we were recommended that it needed to come out. We do, we do envisage to plant more there. Lastly, regarding to Filmer Grove, 
we would like to state it is, is in fact an unadopted public highway which is not maintained by Surrey County Council and is therefore treated as a private road. It serves four properties of multiple occupation. These have all have parking spaces within their boundaries. And indeed we have garages and parking is not a huge problem as alluded to by some objectors. Netherwood Court's management company have torn at the end of the cul-de-sac and applied for adverse possessions from land registry. This has been granted and this will enable us to have more parking within our land. Filmer Grove has always been full of uneven surfaces and potholes, but I have recently organised and got funding from all the properties in the road to have it resurfaced and curves put in. This will enhance the environment of Filmer Grove considerably, which has always been our aim. Thank you for listening to me, and I trust you will support your case officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you very much. Right, Councillor, who wishes to speak on this item? Oh. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I note on page 41 um, that um, this scheme does not propose to fell any trees or do any significant work to trees. So to hear that trees have been taken down is, is quite um, a concern. Um, and also um, looking at the, um, the plans, um, this building does seem significantly higher um, and I like the scheme, but I don't like the height of the, of the two proposed flats. Thank you. Councillor Coburn. Thank you. We've seen uh, similar uh, suggestions to this uh, in other parts, and, and there's no question flat roofs on these flatter developments are a pain in the neck. Um, my mother-in-law lived in one as, as such. She wasn't at the top. The people at the top were constantly having problems with uh, with the flat roof, you know, it, it, they don't last very, very long. And when I first read this, I, I thought this was an improvement. Yes, I can understand the uh, added height, and that does create the danger of overlooking. But actually, in terms of looking at the building, slight echo, and in terms of looking at the building, I actually think it's an improvement. Oh, is that what it is? Thank you. <laughs> That's better. Um, I actually think it is an improved building. Um, my real point is, if it is so similar to uh, the previous application, you know, I mean, how on earth can we start suddenly now saying that something that was acceptable but not delivered for various reasons is now unacceptable? I think we would seem to be um, very unreasonable if, if we did that, you know, unless things have materially changed and, um, you know, different conditions apply. But reading as much as I can locally, I haven't got that impression. What's going on tonight? <laughs> so, I've either got two voices or none. But uh, anyway, so basically, at the moment, I am leaning towards uh, the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. We have obviously got conflicting views here. Um, I would normally look at the Godalming Parish Council and they object. Um, when we look at neighbourhood plan, that there's reasons for objection. However, taking the point in case about WA 2019-0183, where it was granted, in a very similar way, I've got to agree that the problem is if it went to appeal, would they take that and say, well, we've already got that. It, it, it's very similar. The other point that I want to raise is the parking. Um, apparently, it started off with four is now reduced by one. So it's slightly under the limit for parking of that extra accommodation. And again, I do regret that trees have already been taken out. I know this happens over and over all over the place. And yes, I accept the point that they may have been diseased or may not. But I do wish people would wait until planning permission was given or sought until they start taking out trees. So I'm still of an open mind as to whether I should support this or not. Um, I think the officers have made a good case for going ahead, but locally it seems there's a lot of views against. Thank you. Councillor Rivers. Thank you very much. Um, i just like to echo some of what Councillor Rubini has just said. This is an application we're looking at tonight for two penthouses, two penthouses, 
one car parking space. So I think that that suggests overdevelopment right there. And I just wonder if we could look at the view from across Godalming at the um, proposed development, please. Because I suggest that um, people in Godalming consider Frith Hill, the view of Frith Hill and the trees of Frith Hill to be an area that they love and want protected. And if we were to allow this very large building tonight, that would create, I suggest, a precedent, then how could we protect the views of Frith Hill? Thank you. Spence. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I, I share, uh, I think, the concerns of Councillor Rubini and Councillor Rivers on the parking. Um, you know, that, that seems to me, uh, and the arguments put forward um, uh, for it are, I think, um, weak in terms of claiming that the sort of climate change uh, SPD kind of overrides the need for parking. Um, I fear that that may be a precedent that we may come to regret. Um, but the, the other point that I have is, to, is, really a, is, a, is a question from the material change from the previous application. I note that the Godalming plan was made, I think in August, um, August, 2019. So at the time of the original application, was the Godalming um, the development plan uh, already made and have there been changes in the way of the materiality that we should pay heed to that. In which case, I think the, you know, the, I, I have also concerns that I think it's God five um, is, is, is comes into question here. So I would like if I could have some clarification from the officers on, on that last point. Thank you. Officers, would you like to respond to that? So, Tracy, are you able to confirm the date that the um, Godalming Neighbourhood Plan was adopted? I think it's probably worth just um, saying to the committee that obviously um, that plan would have been a material consideration uh, prior to its adoption, not as much weight, um, but it would have still um, been something that would need to have been considered, but we'll just confirm the date. The permission itself was granted um, in July 2019. So August 2019, it was adopted. So, I mean, it was very close to adoption. So I think, you know, you would have been giving it quite a lot of weight at the time of making that decision. Um, but obviously, in the context of policy, there would have been other policies um, that would have been considered as well at that time. Um, and the fundamental policies, um, the MPPF, haven't significantly changed since that 29 decision. And hence, you know, officers are advising the committee tonight that that 29 permission is a, um, you know, a, a, a significant material consideration and there hasn't been any significant shift in policy since the grant of that planning permission. The right. Um, I am concerned given the current situation that we have with appeals being upheld, um, how exposed we are with this particular development. Um, I'd just like a little bit more confirmation of that situation. Uh, I'm sorry. Yep. I'll, I'll come in and answer that. So if members were minded to, to review this this evening, they'd have to be demonstrating to, to, to the committee um, and then officers would then have to demonstrate were there an appeal. What has significant material change in circumstance that justify us departing from the decision that we'd made. So I think my advice this evening is, um, a permission was granted in 2019. Uh, the application before you isn't significantly different. And I can't advise you of any significant change in policy since the 2019 that you could legitimately point to or, or indeed your officers could 
uh, if we were faced at defending a reason for refusal at appeal. I think Councillor White, you've got to view this application as it stands, basically. Right. Anybody else wishes to speak? Yeah. Right. Councillor Williams, another four minutes, if you so desire. No, I don't think I'm going to take uh, uh, four four minutes, Chair. But I just wanted to sort of pick up um, pick up one or two um, points. Um, Godalming Town Council Planning Committee didn't actually respond to the previous application as Godalming Town Council did not have a planning committee at the time. Um, now, and that obviously is a is a significant um, significant factor, uh, particularly given the uh, significance of the Godalming Neighbourhood Plan in terms of this particular application and God 5 in particular. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Coburn that flat roofs are a pain in the neck, but that's not a planning consideration. But this is an increase in scale, which is a clear planning consideration. The building would increase in height by approximately 2.6 metres, total height would be 13.4 metres. That is significant. Neighbourhood plan policy, God 5, is very clear about the character of the Godalming hillside, and this has an impact on the Godalming hillside. Um, and just a word about the red herring about um, the um, parking uh, situation. Um, yes, I think it is very clear that um, that um, I'm fairly um, fairly passionate about climate change, uh, as uh, in my in in my other roles on this council, as I think councillors are aware. Uh, <laughs> of course, parking spaces don't define the type of vehicle which occupies those spaces, whether they're zero emission vehicles or whether they're petrol driven vehicles. Uh, I think the simple fact is that one parking space um, for two dwellings is, is actually insignificant. And that is a pertinent feature so far as planning considerations are concerned. So I, I don't want to add anything to that. There's been a debate about this application uh, and, and I think there are significant grounds for uh, refusing the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we go to the recommendation. That subject to conditions, permission to be granted. Those in favour, please. Result, please. That's eight for and four against and one abstention. The recommendation is carried. Which is the land at One Bird Lane, Cranley, GU670S. Uh, application for the erection of a dwelling including new vehicle access as amended by highways information received on the 30th of August 2022 and ecology information received on the 13th of July 2022 and 26th of August 2022. At land centre coordinates 507306, 1399395, Bumberland Conley, GU670S. Sam Wallace to read the report, please. Sam, your turn. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Uh, the application under consideration uh, is um, WA 2022-00967, uh, land at Womber Lane for the erection of a dwelling, including new vehicular access. Uh, this application has been brought to the committee on the request of Councillor Philip Townsend, who wished for further consideration to be given to neighbour objections and impact on a sensitive site. Uh, the application is uh, situated to the east of Womber Lane. Uh, it's just outside the de de uh, developed settlement boundary of Cranley um, and is designated as countryside beyond the Greenbelt. Um, it is noted that the line of the development settlement uh, boundary runs directly down Womber Lane. Um, the area to the rear of the site is designated ancient woodland and to the north of the site is Old Cottage, which is a grade two listed heritage asset. And they've got an aerial view which shows a generally sort of linear form of development on both sides of the road with some backland development to the north 
uh, including the recently built Fox Meadow. Um, the site is largely cleared grassland to the centre with tree boundaries, um, including four protected oak trees facing Wombra Lane, um, only two of which are within the proposed site boundaries. So photo A is taken from Wombra Lane, um, looking southeast towards the frontage of the site. Um, the access to the left serves both Old Cottage and Fox Meadow. Um, photo B is from Wombra Lane looking northeast. Um, here you can see three of the protected oaks. Um, the one on the right is outside the boundary line, but you've got two there in the uh, center. Um, photo C is taken from the adjacent footpath to the south of the site, and it's looking towards Wombra Lane. Um, it is noted the proposed site boundary would be located around five meters away from the footpath. Uh, so this green corridor would, would not be directly impacted. So um, proposed block plan shows the distance from adjacent properties, all being well within guidance in regard to overbearing loss of light and overlooking impact. Uh, the dwelling would be set back from the street by approximately 20 metres. Um, the plan, if you can just about make out, shows the 15 metre buffer zone from the ancient woodland which would accord with Forestry Commission standing advice. Um, the proposal um, is for the, so it's two-storey L-shaped dwelling. It's approximately 12 metres in width, 14.8 uh, metres in depth and 7.6 metres in height. And the proposed elevations feature gable ends on the front rear and southeast elevations with floor to ceiling glazing on the rear elevation uh, and a small balcony to the rear. Um, officers consider the design is acceptable and the use of materials that include plain uh, clay tile roofing and facing brick with timber weatherboarding on the first floor would appear appropriate with the tree setting. Um, this slide gives you an impression of um, some built form along Wombra Lane, which is largely constitutes two storey dwellings of a mix of both traditional Surrey vernacular and contemporary design in a mix of brick colour, render and cladding. Um, Opposite on the top left is Woodstock, uh, which is uh, directly opposite. Um, to the top right is Old Cottage, which is grade two listed. Um, and the bottom left shows Lawnswood, which again is uh, opposite to the uh, southwest. So proposed floor, floor plans, so it is four bedrooms on the first floor and a mix of amenity space on the ground floor. Of note, there are no first floor windows in the north facing elevation towards Old Cottage um, in order to avoid that sort of detrimental outlook. Um, so in conclusion, the main matters of consideration of design and impact on visual amenity uh, is considered given what has already been mentioned that the proposal would infill a gap in a generally linear built up frontage along Wombra Lane. The design would be appropriate amongst a varied street scene and given the setback and screening of protected trees the development will not appear unduly prominent. In regards to residential amenity, as highlighted in the report, distances from boundaries and neighbours accord with SPD guidance. Um, finally, on impact to trees and ancient woodland, there's no objection from either the Council's Trees and Landscape Officer or the Forestry Commission, and the proposed dwelling would be outside the 15 metre buffer zone. Furthermore, furthermore, a number of conditions would ensure that the oak trees on the front boundary and the ancient woodland are suitably protected during development. Um, a landscape plan is also included that would consist of semi-natural habitat, such as woodland, a mix of scrub, grassland or heathland. Um, officers consider this would enhance the site at present in regards to both biodiversity and the woodland buffer. Um, for these reasons and subject to conditions, officers are recommending approval of the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sam. Right, well, one public speaker on this item is Jesse Chapman. Jesse, are you here? Sorry, yeah. I'm not going to name right. And when you start speaking, you have four minutes, sir, uh, Mr. Chapman. Thank you, members of the committee, for giving me the opportunity to speak in favour of the proposal this evening. Um, I, I don't believe we have anyone speaking objections, so I, I won't take too much of your time. 
Um, as you know, in assessing the proposal and in making their recommendation to approve the application, your offices have identified the submitted application as being fully compliant with the Council's relevant policy documents and overarching planning advice set out within the National Planning Policy Framework. Whilst the officer's report is comprehensive and fully covers all of the relevant matters, I would like to reiterate the following points. The size of the proposed house is compliant with development plan policies and the government space standards. The development is provided with a good degree of amenity space. Although technically outside the settlement area, but adjacent and well related to it, officers have cited relevant appeal decisions within their comprehensive report and on this matter to underpin their recommendation. The site is also within a sustainable location, close to many shops and services and public transport. All relevant technical aspects of the development have been considered, including trees, ecology, highway matters, and the development is found to be fully compliant. The council has confirmed there would be no undue impact upon neighboring properties. The council's heritage officer has found the development to be acceptable in terms of its relationship to the grade two old cottage. The development can demonstrate a circa 25% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions over part L of the building regulations 2013 target emissions rate. Although a modest contribution development will help the council achieve a five year housing land supply, and we believe the development to be of a good design in keeping and complementary to the mixed character of development within the area. I am also pleased to see that the Forestry Commission, the Council's Tree and Landscape Officer, have recommended that the development is an opportunity to enhance the setting of the adjacent ancient woodland. Indeed, the applicants would also welcome any additional conditions or e indeed even a legal agreement um, in regard to further woodland enhancements. Um, I reiterate that the application before you is recommended um, for approval by your officers and to be fully compliant with the development plan. Um, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillors, do you want to do any wish? Councillor Coburn. I think we should say something when officers have you know, done a lot of work and somebody comes along to speak. Um, no, I think this is perfectly acceptable. In fact, I'm, I'm slightly hoping the lottery comes up tonight, you know. Um, very rarely something comes up and you think, well, wouldn't mind living there. Um, no, I, I just think it's a very well-designed house, or it looks very well-designed from the, the pictures we see. Seems to sit nicely. I can't see anybody objecting um in the in the report i mean there are some objections from the certain addresses but i mean they, you know the vast majority of people seem to be in support of this um and i should think it's going to be a very good addition to to the lane so uh, i have no problem with this whatsoever any other council wish to speak my word <laughs> all right uh, do we move straight uh, oh council stands thank you chairman uh just a a, a couple of comments from from me um I'm um, with Councillor Coburn. I don't find very many reasons here to object to this. Um, however, it's more a sense of frustration I have when I read in these reports of, of preemptive tree felling. And I'm conscious that you know, from a planning perspective, our hands are somewhat tied. But I just wanted to, to have on record my frustration that this seems to be uh, something that we see time and time again, and um, I think it's, it, it's something as, as a council we should we should look at. But that's that's all I have to say. Thank you. I also do that is young or tree preservation or done them. Then obviously you know people are free to do what uh, they wish. Okay, Joe, uh, right. Do you move to the recommendation? Huh? The recommendation is that uh, selecting an engineer should be granted. So those in favour, please raise their hand. Results. Um, yeah, that's 13 4, so the recommendation is carried. Thank you very much. Right, we move on to the last application tonight, which is um, WA 2022 02867 Carrier Knoll Road, Carrier, Carriad Knoll Road, Godalming. 
gives them to EL. This application is for the direction of extensions and alterations as amended by plans uploaded on the 22nd of February 2023 at Carriad No Road Godwin GU70 to EL. And there was a site visit here on Monday, which a number of us were present at. And the officer is Sam again, Sam Alice to present. Sam. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the final application under consideration at committee is uh, WA 2022 uh, 02867 at Carriard Knoll Road in Godalming uh, for the erection of extensions and alterations. Um, the application has been brought to committee at the request of Councillor Steve Williams to consider the impact upon residential amenity. Um, the application site is situated uh, at the end of Knoll Road in a developed area of Godalming. As can be seen on the location plan, plots are generally atypical and neighbouring properties run perpendicular to the north uh, with Larchwoods and Carriad backing on to the Godalming hillside. Um, so this aerial view, it does attempt to show the site with constraints. So uh, the hatched green area is the ancient woodland Obviously, you've got the property with the indicator figure on it. Um, that's a uh, carryad. Um, the area between the green lines is subject to the Godalming Hillside uh, God 12 policy in the Godalming and Farcombe neighbourhood plan. Um, you can also see a protected oak tree to the southeast of the dwelling. Um, the proposed block plan shows the distance from adjacent neighbouring uh, boundaries and distance from the rear of the site onto Godalming Hillside. Um, these distances would generally be compliant with residential SPD guidance in relation to overbearing development for two storey and single storey side and rear extensions. Uh, there would be ample parking provision to the front of the site and no changes to the existing access are proposed. Um, so photo A and B show the front elevation of Carriad uh, looking down Knoll Road. Um, the existing building is a 1960s uh, linear sort of dwelling, sort of contemporary for its time, uh, with sort of horizontal cladding on the first floor. Um, you can also see an existing sort of flat roof water tank on the second level. Uh, you can just, just about make that out. Um, the top left picture, you can gauge the distance between uh, Carriad and the neighbour at Forward Cottage. Uh, so photo C is of the side elevation of Carriad. There currently is a uh, first floor side terrace area with no screening and a, first, a sort of rear first floor conservatory uh, that would be demolished to accommodate the new extensions. Um, you can also see the recently added timberboard fencing along the boundary with forward cottage in the distance. Um, so this is of the rear elevation of Carriad looking north. The photo shows the distance sort of from the hillside and sort of stood pretty much at the hillside uh, where the picture was taken. Um, and so this is the view from the um, of the hillside from Lamas land outside the council offices. Uh, the neighbour larch, Larchwoods can be more readily seen, uh, whilst Carriad has afforded more screening given the higher protected tree line um, and shows overall there would be really sort of no material impact in officers' view on this on the skyline. Um, um, the proposal is for a, a yeah, part single storey, part two storey extension to the side, a two storey rear extension incorporating a covered balcony, a terrace. Um, and erection of a second uh, story level. Um, change to the fenestrations at the front include additional insulated glazing, which would be obscure, as well as two new obscure bathroom windows. Uh, there'll be cement rental on the ground floor with vertical timber cladding on the first floor. Um, to the rear, these materials would be carried through with large scale glazing. First floor terrace is located to the west. Uh, officers have conditioned that privacy screening be submitted, which would be an improvement on the existing situation where there is currently none. On the second floor level, there are only windows on the rear elevation. Um, officers have conditioned the removal of permitted development rights such, to make sure that no windows can be added to the front or side elevations of that second floor level. Um, the proposed side elevations um, show the second floor 
level with indicative height of what would be if there was a pitched roof um, showing that it would actually be similar in height to surrounding pitched properties. Um, post floor plans show that it would be a large uplift in floor area, which does include a three bay garage and six bedrooms, um, notwithstanding the site is in the developed area, so it's not constrained in this regard. Um, the second floor level includes a gym and office, but as stated, only would have windows to the rear. Um, finally, the cross-section plan highlights the 25 degree rule regarding loss of light. Um, it shows the distances from forward cottage would be acceptable, and as such, there'd be no material loss of light to this property. Um, so the main matters of consideration are, as discussed, our design and impact on visual amenity and residential amenity. And for the reasons stated in the report and uh, through the presentation subject to conditions, officers are recommending approval of this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sam. We're number four speakers on this item, and the first being a Nora Price. Nora, are you here? Are you? You've got four minutes when you start speaking, Nora. Good evening, my name is Nora Price, and my husband Martin and I live at Thorwood Cottage, Knoll Road, Godalming, at the top of Frith Hill. We have enjoyed living within this welcoming community for 35 years. We acknowledge that our neighbours at Carriad are entitled to develop their property. Indeed, the previous owners received planning permission in 2018, and we raised no objections at that time, as the proposal was sympathetic to its content, avoiding overdevelopment, and was not overbearing for its neighbours. Specifically, there was no significant western extension nor third floor. By contrast, the current owner's plans significantly exceed the scale of the previous owner's proposed development, which is why we object and believe the approval should be denied. Our neighbours moved to Carriad in September 22, mentioned they were thinking of developing a carport, but we never imagined the scale of the whole development as submitted, and the immediate neighbours were not consulted prior to the submission of the detailed plans of 21 November 22. Similarly, we were not consulted about the amended application of 22nd February 23, and we and other adjacent neighbours resubmitted similar detailed objections around the 7th of March 23, including markups from Thorwood. Images one and two submitted with the objections are crucial as they show the impact of the proposed development from our perspective. We note the strong suggestions of the residential extension supplementary planning document 6.1, that it is good practice to consult with all neighbors about proposed plans prior to submission. Carriad has already been extended from its original size of 200 square meters to 300. It is now proposed to double in size to 600 square meters. Godalming Town Council in their submission of 9th of December 22 had concerns about the size of the development, particularly in their points one and two. And they also raised concerns about proximity to boundaries, overdevelopment, impact on neighboring amenity implications in respect of the Godalming hillside policy directly referencing contravention of policy points 5A and B. The overbearing nature of the Western extension of the development would be most acutely felt by us here at Thorwood, particularly in the much used southern part of the garden in summer, and most certainly in the autumn and winter when the leaves have dropped. The new third floor is similarly overbearing for neighbours and forward, and is likely to create issues for other properties in the area, and also having a negative effect on the Godalming and Farncombe skyline, which policy 12 of the neighbourhood plan seeks to protect. We note the calculations about the extent of the plot that would be covered by the development. However, these calculations include the steeply sloping southern side of the site, that would not be usable for building and is what forces the building to be located close to the northern boundary of the site, which is shared with our property.
This calculation significantly underestimates the proportion of usable land that the development would occupy. And in conclusion, we believe Cariad could be extended without the development being overbearing for its neighbors. However, the proposed development is simply too big, too close, and too high to its neighbors, and sets a dangerous precedent for larger, taller developments in the area. We believe the proposal is in conflict with the relevant design and environmental policies of the local development plan and should be rejected in its current form. Right on four minutes, thank you very much. Right, uh, the next speaker we have is a Charlotte Edkins. Charlotte, would you speak please? As you, when you get start speaking, you have four minutes, Charlotte. Good evening. My name is Charlotte Edkins. I'm the homeowner's sister and currently residing at Carriad. I'm reading you a statement on behalf of my family. Thank you very much to those who took the time to visit our home on Monday. As you will have seen, it's in a very poor state of repair. It's damp, poorly insulated, and requires urgent modernization. We purchased the house in September 2022 as an opportunity to create an, our own wonderful grand design for our growing family. The secluded private location attracted us to this house as it's tucked away at the end of a long private driveway, almost unseen from the street and screened off from all sides of neighboring properties with well-established and dense planting. We are lucky enough to have found an excellent architect who I hope you will agree has done an outstanding job of designing a building which will be of special merit and greatly enhances the area. One of our main objectives of the design was to improve the amenity, amenity for Cariad and our neighboring properties. The existing building has a large number of windows to the east and west elevations, which are all proposed to be completely removed with the new design focusing on windows to the south, looking into the dense mature trees, generating an indoor outdoor feel. We also propose to move the existing balcony on the western elevation to the south, as its current position is directly facing the neighboring properties. Additional screening is also proposed to further enhance the seclusion and privacy, privacy for all. We'd like to point out there's been a lot of misinformation spread within the objections, with many misleading hand sketches and statements produced, and with neighbors petitioning the local area where these have been copied from one objection to the next. We would therefore please ask that you have reviewed in detail the architect's design, along with the very detailed reports from your offices, noting that in the seven months this application has come to the committee, this proposal has now been reviewed by three planning officers who are all in agreement with the recommendation to grant approval. In conclusion, we are very pleased with your officers' reports confirming that our proposal does not re reduce neighbor am amenity. This design developed with Waverley's planning department is less overlooking than the existing building and improves privacy for ourselves and our neighbors. But the proposal is not too large for the plot. It is within the Godalming development zone and uses just 20% of the footprint of our land. That the building cannot be seen from the town or the Lamas lands, Carriad is, is behind and not within the Godalming hillside zone. It is completely hidden by the dense protected woodland, which is in Waverley's control under the tree protection legislation. That is, it does not reduce light. The additions to the building will not overshadow any neighboring properties due to its distance from them. That the proposed work will greatly improve thermal performance of the building beyond the latest building regulations and has been designed in line with Waverley's new sustainable sustainability guidance that it will not affect the character of the local area. Frith Hill area is defined by its modern buildings. The new design greatly improves the existing modern building and none of the additions will be seen from the town or road. That the building will not impact any trees. The building sits well behind the protected trees and will not harm them in any way as stated in the arboricultural impact assessment and confirmed by your tree officer. 
Also, we have already started planting new trees and shrubs to increase seclusion further. Thank you very much for your time. Right on the north shot. Right. Ward councillor, councillor Steve Williams, you have no right to speak four minutes now, and if you still wish, four minutes at the end of the bit. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chair, for a second opportunity to speak this evening as a local ward member. And I can only apologise again for calling in this planning application. Um, it is, however, rather different from the previous one, and it is uh, significantly extensive, shall we say, for the extension of a single residential dwelling. Um, in my career as a councillor, I've come across many applications, as many of us will have done for residential extensions and alterations, but I think I'm right in saying that this application is the largest that I have seen. Um, the fact that the residence is already significantly large, the fact that it's an early 1960s build which contrasts significantly with existing neighbouring properties may not be a material uh, planning reason for refusing uh, this application, but the fact that we are looking at an extension here, which increases the area from 200 square metres to 600 square metres, 600 square metres plus, I think, I think is very significant indeed. Um, the words of the resident articulating her concerns a few minutes ago certainly reverberate in my ears, too big, too close and too high. Um, there is no doubt, I think, that there are strong planning reasons for suggesting that the scale and mass are excessive. Carriad itself uh, is visible as a feature of the uh, Godalming um, hillside, as has actually been demonstrated by the uh, visuals which uh, you saw earlier, um, and the extension would undoubtedly have an impact on that. Um, and would therefore be in conflict with Godalming Neighbourhood Plan Policy uh, God 12. However, however for me, um, the most significant uh, impact uh, and concern for this application is on the neighbours. Ne uh, members will be aware that 19 letters of objection have been submitted to the, this application, but the impact is greatest on the four residential homes that immediately adjoin the site. I've visited Carriad itself and the neighbouring properties, particularly Thorwood Cottage, which is probably most affected uh, by the development. And now the officer's report suggests that the planning history is a highly significant material consideration but I would gently suggest that it is somewhat of an exaggeration. I've seen the drawings of the proposed extension granted in 2018, and the scale is highly significantly less, uh, and there is no Western extension whatsoever. And that is what has a particular impact on the closest neighbours living at Thorwood uh, Cottage. It's doubtful whether a single residential development of this scale would be acceptable, even if it were entirely on the south facing side, but certainly the bulk scale and mass of this extension overshadows the neighbours and is entirely out of keeping with the neighbourhood. I would certainly suggest that the application is not consistent with local plan uh, policy uh, DM4 and the key issues of overdevelopment, loss of neighbour amenity and the protection of the Godalming hillside, I think are very significant in this particular instance. And I hope uh, councillors will take that into their considerations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, on the normals bit. Right, councillors, who wishes on the debate? My word. Councillor Ripper? Thank you very much. Um, with all the other applications we've been looking at tonight, um, we have seen pictures of how the, 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 whatever the application that we're looking at each time, how it fits with neighbouring houses or the vicinity, so that it has something to say. Again, if I could look at the picture of original Carriad um, beside Thorwood Cottage, please.
because I think that, to my mind, it shows how the cladding of the original Cariad, how that almost links with the um, tiles of Thorwood Cottage. So it's almost trying to say something about blending in with the existing properties because Cariad, the original the building that we have still was in itself out of keeping with that area, but things change, designs move, but it still had something to say to its next door property. I don't think the existing, that the app, the one that we're looking at tonight has anything to do with any other property. So I have reservations. Ah, oh, right. Councillor Austin. Thank you. Um, I found the site visit actually fairly helpful because my concerns were about the visibility of it from Godalming Centre. Um, when I did go to site, I did see the, the building itself is set significantly back and that has allayed my concerns to a certain extent. Um, although the second floor I felt was large. Uh, and I do understand the neighbours' concerns. It's a big bulk block piece of um, building, uh, and uh, I understand neighbours' concerns about that. Uh, I'm personally, ideally, the Western extension would be smaller. Um, uh, so I, I, I have reservations. Thank you. Councillor Coburn. I think we all have sort of reservations about this one. It's funny, isn't it? Each decade, the 60s, I think, got the music right, but it didn't do much for, <laughs> didn't do much for architecture, did it? It really didn't. And I don't mean to be rude to the people who, who live in the house at the moment, but it's not a thing of beauty, is it? Um, so what is acceptable on that site, and this is always a tricky one, because we are not supposed to stand in the way of modern design. You know, we're not supposed to just have pastiche all over the place. Um, but modern design, just because it is so in your face, always looks to me more frightening than a, a larger traditional design. There's, there's just something about the materials and the, the shape, the, um, the sort of baldness of it, if you like. It's, I have to say, it's not my cup of tea, but then, you know, there's plenty of other places to go. But I'm a bit like everybody else here. I, I can understand what they're trying to do, and I think they're doing the right thing. Um, making a really good home out of what, you know, really is, is um, an unappealing uh, and probably not very um, um, sustainable in any sense building. So it is just that question of the, does it go just that bit too far in size? And I think that is the, the difficult um, issue, but it does sit back and, you know, it, it's, I'm swithering basically, but I, I can understand what they're trying to achieve. Um, I just wonder whether it, it is just a, a tad too large. Thank you. Any other council wish to speak? Ah, Councillor Morrison and Councillor Rubini. Thank you, Chair. Um, when I, before going up to look at the site on, um, uh, on Monday, I was rather against this. I thought it was overbearing, overdeveloped, but actually being to the site, and having a look at it and just seeing how cleverly the architects had actually maximized um, the property without getting into any sort of real planning issues. I personally think the West is just a little bit too large. I think the second floor is too large, but I am leaning more and more towards um, sort of going along with the, 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 the actual um, plan as submitted. That's all I'd say, thank you. Thank you. Rubini. Thank you, Chair. Um, when I looked at the um, application at home, the height, there's been great play about the square footage increase. How much is it actually increased in height? And I couldn't read it in the small detail here. The printing was too small for my eyesight, and I apologise for that. I think Sam is about to answer your question, I hope. Yeah, so the existing height is about 5.5 .5 metres. Um, that second floor level would add about 2.3 metres roughly, which is sort of in line with a lot of the pitched roof houses in the area that, that 
can reach up to sort of eight, nine meters in height. Um, that flat roof, to, yeah, does have an effect. It's, it obviously is set back from no road as well. So, um, yeah. Can it be yes? Yeah. yeah, it's just to make that a percentage. I assume then what we're talking about is something that's fifty percent higher than what it is now. Can I answer that? Oh, that. Yeah, it's uh, probably don't know the exact percentage. It's probably slightly less than that, but yeah, seven, uh, five point five meters currently, and then about two point three meters on top of that. So. Um, it is, um, there was the drawing that I could go back to, but it does show the, what a pitch roof would look like. And it actually would still be less with obviously the flat roof linear design. Any other council wishes to speak? No, right. Uh, right, Councillor Williams. Have another right to another four minutes if you so wish. Um, I'll be very brief on this occasion. I think councillors have um, expressed considerable um, reservations. It's not because this is an extension. Um, I agree the residents are trying to make a good home and the architects are doing their best within the constraints, but the sheer scale of this is excessive. Um, it's significantly higher than the current uh, residents and the massive increase in the volume is uh, is, is something which I think um, goes you know goes goes way um, way beyond what would normally be expected of a residential development and I clearly uh, do believe that it's in contravention of of our, of our planning uh, planning um, regulations. Thank you very much. Well. We move to the recommendation that subject to conditions permission be granted. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against? Abstain. Result. So that's seven, four, and five against. So the recommendation is carried. Right. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's proceedings. Thank you for your forbearance. Uh, safe journey home. And we meet again in two weeks' time on July the 12th. Yes. Uh, just to confirm on the meeting, um, we are just putting together the potential agenda for the 12th, but we'll be able to confirm to Democratic Services whether there is sufficient business to hold a meeting on the 12th. Um, so you will be hearing from democratic services to confirm whether or not the 12th of july meeting goes ahead <laughs>